hello everyone welcome back to the channel if you are new around here welcome and if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back i do appreciate you guys being here so i have a really really good video for you today i've mentioned before that i wanted to do some videos more often about some of the articles that i come across you guys know i'm an avid researcher and reader i don't watch fun fact i don't watch a lot of like tv if that makes sense um though we do have cable in the house but my husband is a big football fan um so you know that's what he watches in basketball and different things but um i really don't watch a whole lot of tv i i'm an avid reader i love reading and i love reading a lot about uh financial news economic news um even like some of the world news but i don't get too consumed in it because it can be like depressing but i'm a big like financial reader if that makes sense um and so I, when i find good articles on cnbc which i really do love and i'm not sponsored by them but i do love cnbc um, I like to share it with you guys, especially if something resonated with me. And so um, as you guys see here, three financial risk areas for consumers to watch ahead of a possible recession. And because we've been talking about this a lot, and I know you see it a lot all over social media. Oh my goodness, recession, recession. There's a lot of fear out there. Um, and I'm not about, you know, that I'm about being proactive and what we can do, not just wealth building or like for our future selves, but in our current present um, lives, right? Uh, this recession, we are in one. I don't know why I keep saying possible, but technically we are in one. Um, and it's a recession with a high inflationary rate. So let's talk a little bit about these three areas. I'm going to share with you, like, you know, some of my perspective from it, and you can leave me some of your thoughts down in the comment section below. Okay. Um, and so let's go to some of the key points. So this is some of the key points from the article. I will leave a link to this down below. Uh, but again, you guys know the Federal Reserve announced a rate hike this past Wednesday. I'm sure many of you were watching Mr. Jerome Powell talking about this, and he is very adamant. He made it very clear that as long as he see inflation continuing to rise at the rate that it is, he is going to continue to keep his foot on the gas. And keep in mind, the Fed is not talking about like getting inflation down to what it was before the pandemic. It's trying to slow how fast it's going up. To me, honestly, it feels like inflation is increasing at a very fast pace. Every time you turn around, things are just getting more and more and more expensive, like in short spurts. Okay. If you go to the supermarket one month and you go back the following month, your bill is higher. And so this is what he's trying to do is just slow how fast it's increasing. Okay. Um, another thing is that, you know, consumers and experts are expecting a recession though i believe we are in one i think a lot of us feel it um and then the final key point here is while a downturn may or may not happen there are ways that we can kind of get ahead so strengthen our positions let's scroll down below and let's see what the article is i'm um, talking about i'm not going to read the whole article we're just going to go through it and point out some key points and have a um a discussion right so no one knows when Right. A lot of times you hear people talk about recession or when it really, really hits the fan and things just get really terrible. Like, when is that going to happen? When, when, when people are pulling back, people are pulling back and they're tightening their pockets a little bit more. They're being more specific and, you know, being more strategic about what they are buying and how they are buying. OK, um, but some people think we're not in a recession. I mean, let me know down below. Do you think we are in a recession? Or do you think we're not in a recession <laughs> and why? Um, but let's talk about the first area where consumers may feel some pinches. OK, job losses. I've talked to a couple of you in the past month who have lost jobs or who know they are going to lose um, their job. So, again, when a recession happens, companies are getting tighter with their budgets. They're not hiring as much. And then those of the, uh, those people who are currently at the job, um, they may start to lay off or they may freeze, um, raises or bonuses or things like that. So if you find yourself in this position, the best thing that you can do is get your emergency fund up, um, and, and, and up, up, up. I mean, like not just a thousand dollars, save as much as you can. When you know a job loss is on the horizon or you can feel it, you hear some whispers going around the office, save, 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 save save, 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 save. Okay. You got to be defensive when it comes to this so that you can protect um, yourself. But yeah, and keep in mind the federal government, the reason why they keep increasing the interest rates is because they want the unemployment rate to be high. 
They want it high. They need it high. Now, Jerome Powell is not saying that directly, but if you listen to his conferences, that's what he's saying. Okay. In order to get things to come down, we need a higher unemployment rate. Okay. Um, so again, you want to, you know, make sure that you are being wise with your finances, paying off high interest that if you can, if you need to get a side hustle, start getting your resume in order, right? Start looking around, putting your name out there, networking. Why? Because you want to protect yourself um, on the back end. Let's talk about another point that they talked about when consumers are maybe at risk. Okay. They're talking about when people are starting to default on auto loans. Now, ever since the the pandemic happened, Cars have increased, at least in my humble opinion, 25, 30%. Have you looked at the cost of a car lately? Um, and I'm saying this because my daughter is driving. So we're looking to get her like, you know, one of the safe, smaller cars for, you know, a, a young girl. So like a Civic or um, what's the Toyota one? A Corolla or something like that. New car buyers are taking on loans where your payment is one. I, I, I can't even say it. A thousand dollars a month. Like if I had that much of a car payment, I want like a Maserati or, you know, like give me a name, another fancy car in the comments. I'm talking about fancy, fancy, fancy. And that's just the car payment. That's not insurance. That's not upkeep or things like that. That's, that's a lot. So when people who are already stretched, then, then lose their jobs. I remember the government is, or the Fed is trying to increase the unemployment rate. Guess what happens? People default on their car loans, which is really, really sad because I mean, most of the time nowadays you need some type of transportation to get around, especially if you don't live in like in a big metropolitan area, like in the city or something. If you live in the country or the suburbs, you don't have access to um, public transportation. So you need to, you know, have a vehicle. Now, some of the people got more car than they needed. Um, and so, you know, and then some of them were locked into terrible loans. Um, you see some subprime loan information here where people are severely delinquent. Um, some people didn't put down payments on their cars. So again, all of these things factor in to the higher auto loan um, default that's going on right now. And then the final thing where customers could be in danger, and this is something I talk about often on this channel, and it's credit cards. Credit cards is probably the, the one debt outside of like payday loans, outside of like borrowing against your retirement, um, outside of like uh, car loans, even mortgages. It's the credit cards. That's where most people fall and can't get out of at is credit cards. And I've been there. So I'm speaking from experience. Um, when I was in the thick of <laughs> the debt that my husband and I had, I would tell myself, oh, I'm making the payments every month. And the minimum payments is one of the worst things you can do now. If that's all you can do, that's great. But speaking from a mathematical standpoint is one of the worst things you can do. And the credit card companies know this. That's why they're so like, oh, you can, your payments only be $25 a month, $30,000 a month. And the interest rates that are, are tied to most credit cards are variable interest rates. So every time the Fed increases the interest rate, your payment is going to go up and you're going to realize, oh my goodness, I can't get out of this hole. So one of the things that I always suggest many people do is really stop using the credit cards if you know that it's it's one of your pitfalls and be honest because it was for me. I had to really relearn a lot of the things that I thought I knew about money and finance. I had to relearn how to use credit the right way. There's a lot of things you can do and achieve when you use it the right way, but most people use it the wrong way. And so if you look down here, credit card balances rose to 986 billion with a B in the fourth quarter of last year. That's insane. $986 billion. And again, a lot of this may be, you know, deep seated issues. Okay. I, again, I was in debt because I struggled with childhood issues. Um, so we don't know all of the reasons why people have to use this. Some people have to use it just to survive and live. But if one of the things I always tell people, if you are coming into large sums of money, that's outside of the paycheck you get from your job. So a tax refund, we just passed the tax refund season. I loved seeing so many people put money towards their debt and getting out of debt or half or, you know, just something towards their debt because it's getting them um, ahead. But, you know, higher interest rates means that any outstanding debt that you have is going to get more expensive. Okay. And the thing about credit card companies is that they are very patient. Like 
They are very patient. They will take your $25 a month, $35 a month, $40 a month for years, for years. And though you may have borrowed, let's say a thousand dollars at the end of it, you'll be paying five, seven, ten thousand dollars because of the higher interest. So again, I want to just appoint this article out. Make sure you guys go and read the whole thing. It's a very, very good read. I love spending time reading articles from CNBC. I mean, I really, really do love it because they break it down. They don't fear manga. They just give you the information and they try to give you some ways to better yourself or to get out of the situation that you're in. But again, we talked about job loss. We talked about um, defaults on auto loans and we talked about credit cards. Okay. So those are the three areas that most Americans will have the most trouble in, in this recession, but we're going to, we know, you know, what's going on. So we're going to be proactive and get ahead of it. We're not going to be in fear. We're going to be proactive. We're going to be wise. We're going to be strategic about our finances. Okay. So leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the article. Again, I will leave the article link down below, but I really did enjoy reading it. And I wanted to share with you guys again. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you like share and subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification button so that you don't miss upload. Every time I post a video, check out my podcast channel. And if you need some help, check out my website. I have a lot of resources there that I think you would find that's, you know, valuable. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now.